Good morning everyone, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here on a very blustery day, uh, so thanks for joining us. Um, it's going to be a bit different this week, we've got a camera uh, or a phone that's covered in old socks over the microphone, so hopefully that's going to stop it getting all that blustery noise, uh, but we'll see. So hopefully you can all hear me fine, um, let me know on the, uh, the piece that you can hear me. We've done a quick test and we think you can, so that's all cool. So thanks for joining again, us again, this is week five. I think and your request for this week were to do pizza and to do some wings so we're going to do I'm going to try and do uh, pizza on one egg uh, wings on another and then we're going to do the wings with three different sauces uh, we're going to do one quick pizza so I've got my egg over here um, uh, getting warmed up ready for the pizza and I've got an egg behind me cooking already got the wings on so they cook so we can look at those sauces but I'm going to do what I always do and introduce you to the team. So let's grab this. So as usual, <laughs> we've got Andy uh, on camera. Uh, she, my sister-in-law living with us at the moment. So still. still living with us. Yeah, it's been God, how many weeks? We're going to have her until who knows. Anyway, Move on. moving on. Uh, we've got Helena over here. Uh, she might be a bit better and have less uh, faux pas on the typing this week. We've set her up with a keyboard, so there should be no limp wood as it was last week. Um, but we'll see about that. Um, anyway, right, I'll pass you back to Andy. Thank you. So let's get going on this. So I thought very quickly I'd just show you how I light an egg and how I get it hot pretty quick. So um, we're going to go on this egg. Um, I have got a stainless steel fire bowl in this one, so let me just just grab it, just so you can see what my egg looks like inside. I'll take this out, and you can see it is pretty clean in there. I've just given it a brush down, taken the ash out the bottom, and I've put new lump wood in that fire bowl. Now, it, if you haven't got one of those, it doesn't matter. All I'm going to do, I've got a non-big green egg fire starter. I'm going to get it going. Put it in the middle. Um, if you dive in, Andy, and so they can see this, I'm just going to put a bit of charcoal over the top, only a little bit, so I don't smother it. I'm going to open the draft door at the bottom, and I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes, and that should get this whole thing going nicely. Okay, so that's how I light it, really quickly. Um, the charcoal level is up to the top of that fire bowl. That's all there is. No matter what I'm cooking, same level every time. 10 minutes now with the lid open and the bottom door open just to get it all going okay let now wash my hands very quickly soap's blown away well i think everything's going to blow away today oh. Leak down there. right first so first question already Yep. Yeah. Do you only use one lighter even on the XL? Yes, um, I lit, lit that XL over there this morning uh, with one of those little starters in the middle. Um, I do have the new stainless steel um, fire bowl in there that you can divide it in half so you can have only put charcoal in half, but even then I would only use one lighter. I took the divider out today. I've got charcoal in the whole lot and we've just got one lighter on there. So um, yeah, simple as that, right. We better crack on, we've got a lot to cover today. So um, this egg here, I'm op I've opened it up just now, I've got both doors wide open. It's up to just about 300 degrees and I've got it set up. Um, I'll, I'll show you when we put the pizza on, but um, I've got it set up indirect and we're gonna cook pizza on this one. So let's go and make that pizza. So behind you, Andy. Right. Yes, uh, could you do both wings? Oh, it's just starting to spit the rain, brilliant. Um, um, could you do both pizza and wings on the same egg? Uh, not really, because it's different temperatures. So I want the, for pizza, I want the, uh, not the same time anyway. So I want the egg to be quite hot. So I'm getting up to about 350 degrees C for pizza, but for the wings, I only want it about 180. But yes, they're both an indirect cook and I'll show you the setups for both those. Sunshine now, a minute ago it's rain. Right, I'm going to grab one of these pizza dough balls. Um, so this is, a, this is a bit of an experiment. Um, these are sourdough, uh, not my normal pizza recipe that's on my website. 
um, and I made them yesterday and if they don't work this is going to be a disaster because I haven't got a backup um, so it's the first time um, doing this live so and this isn't going to be very good I've got polenta here <coughs> which is about to go everywhere so we'll sprinkle that on now the point in using polenta when you're making pizza is it doesn't soak up water as fast as flour so your pizza base won't stick to your chopping board so I'm going to get one of my pizza balls put it down and I'm just going to start pushing it out now I want to leave a crust around the outside um, so as I push it out and stretch it I want to leave a bit of a thicker bit around the outside and we'll just keep pushing it out I might just flip it make it easier because um, I want that crust to puff up and you can see there's already air bubbles in there um, because this is a sourdough and it's been stretched overnight uh, sorry it's been sitting overnight I made these uh, seven eight o'clock last night so we're gonna push this out and you just keep stretching it now being a dough it's gonna spring back a bit so you've got to leave it a bit and then you stretch it in fact these have got a little bit dry on the edge um, in the wind and the sun as we've set up unfortunately but we'll see how they go might not be perfect but they'll still be pretty pretty good so now if you're using my normal dough uh, then roll them out but these I don't want to roll out I want to pull them out um, so how much dough did you make? Um, so these weigh just uh, they weigh 240 grams each so the question was how much dough um, there is an absolutely brilliant app called Pizza App P-I-Z-Z-A-P-P -P -P. no pizza it's not pizza app it's Pizza App um, I'll put a link in the so the link is on the page um, oh. right. and uh, yeah it, it will you put in how many balls you want to make what size you want them to be so 240 is a good size grams uh, what size you want them to be and it will tell you exactly how much re um, of the ingredients you need and if you're using one type of yeast over another it will tell you all of those right, I'm gonna say that looks pretty good it's quite thin in the middle so I'm gonna put a bit of sauce on it so this is my standard pizza sauce uh, recipe is on the website um, so I'm just gonna we made this in advance so we'll get some of this on my shirt who asked that Mike Burns Mike Burns thank you Mike up in Scotland um, while he's taking the piss shouldn't say that but while he's taking the piss um, Mike is the proud owner and has been of a big green egg for the last probably 10 months and he hasn't even lit it yet so thanks for that Mike uh, right always sauce then uh, cheese I'm just using normal mozzarella we had some pizza the other day so this is the the bald stuff in the packet with the uh, lots of liquid in so we had pizza the other day so this is just the leftovers and still still see the liquid in there um, so a bit of bit of um, mozzarella I'm gonna put some onions a little bit of onions on but less is more when it comes to pizza in my opinion uh, we'll get a little bit of pepper just for color okay Ooh, one of Helena's hairs in there mushrooms <laughs> bit of that and now right what you could do is use one of these and get under there and jab it and it's going to work okay because I've got this polenta on however on the market there is this super superb thing I don't sell them it's a bit like a conveyor belt on a thing you can get them from bakery bits who aren't selling anything at the moment but all you do is you hold this bit and you push the pizza peel in Okay, and what it does is it just lifts it straight onto your pizza peel and then when you get to the oven you can just do it the other way. Okay, so you put it near your pizza, pull it on, job done. That takes some practice. The first time you try and use it, it's a bit difficult. Um, so we've got a pizza, um, so we'll take it over. And if you look at this egg now, we're up, we're not quite 350. Um, I turned it up just before um, uh, we went on air should be okay I'm just going to burp it so open it a little bit because we're at a high temperature open it right up and then we can just do the reverse drop our pizza on there and close it now what you should see in here 
Uh, we've got a pizza, we've got, sorry, uh, the convector underneath, feet up, gap, stainless steel grid, pizza stone. So I'll show you that over here. Um, the point in that is you want to keep, don't read the American recipes, but you need to keep a gap between your convector and your pizza stone. Um, if you sit them on top of each other, I'll show you one over here. Just pull this up. So, for example, if you put your convector in like that and put your baking stone on top like that, which is the way all the Americans say to do it, as your convector gets hot, your baking stone gets really hot and your pizza start to burn on the bottom. So other people then will say, oh, well then you need to separate them. So they start putting aluminium foil between them. Um, I've got, I'll be back on the camera set. This is another thing I saw. They're little, um, this is copper pipe, just cut into little tubes and people put them like this. So it just lifts it up. You need three or four. Um, so load of rubbish, just turn your that up that way, put your stainless steel on top and put it on like that works perfectly and I'll show you that that's why I've lit this one um, so if we look in Andy uh, it's going nicely in the middle now so I'm just going to pull those top bits off like that shut the lid open the top fully bottoms open fully and what we should see is this will start to rise and it will come up really quickly once it's gone past 180 degrees then we're going to put all of this stuff back in uh, and start warming it up. So by the end, by the end of this today, we should have this egg ready to make pizza and all of that heated up quite happily. So I'm just going to give them another little wash. Any questions? Can you use the cast iron grid? Can you use the cast iron grid? Um, I prefer not to. Um, cast iron can crack if it's got a heat differential over it. So I've, I've seen people crack their cast iron grids when they put them on top of their convectors. Um, you don't need the heat of the cast iron grid, so just use your stainless steel one. Any other questions, Helen? Uh, can you build pizza on the wheel, on the peel? Yes, you can build up your pizza on the peel, um, but you want to do it qu fairly quickly so it doesn't stick to your peel. So again, use polenta. Uh, polenta or rice flour, um, they, they both uh, are very good at not sucking the water up and therefore sticking. So you saw that didn't stick. Um, it also doesn't stick to this baker, this um, baking cloth. A uh, bit of flour on there, it's, it'll work really well. Um, by the way, you never get them clean again, unfortunately. Um, this one's been uh, through the wash so many times. It, it, you know, we've had this 15 years, 20 years probably. Um, I imported this. Um, wish I'd bought the franchise. Right. So that's been in three or four minutes. Um, we can have a quick look. So we'll burp it. Oh, that's looking nice. Maybe it's been in there longer than I thought. Okay, question was, difference between the old daisy wheel and the new version. What I'm just doing, oh, the base of that looks fabulous. I'm gonna give that another minute, minute and two. Um, difference between this the regulator and the old daisy wheel down here um, with one of the daisy wheel when you had it all set up nicely do it like that say uh, and then you open the egg it moved um, with the new regulator there are magnets in here and it doesn't move so once you set it it stays at temperature no matter what you do uh, and there's there's only one moving part um, this is how it was originally um, back in 1974 they had it looked pretty much like that but without the magnets um, uh, in terms of control I this takes a bit more getting used to than the data wheel uh, right so let's get this pizza out out I think do I ever use the expander to get the pizza higher in the dome there's a lot of talk about getting it up there I think if you look at this dough I mean, if you look underneath, we've got a lovely crisp bottom. Hopefully you can see that. We've got a lovely uh, bit on our dough. I'm happy with that. Um, I'll use this peel to get it off with. It makes it so much easier. Um, but um, I don't bother putting it higher in the dough. Um, I don't need to, in my opinion. 
I'm going to shut this down a little bit now because we're going to use it for something else. Um, but I think that's a great looking pizza. Um, anyway. Uh, it is polenta. They're like a small grain. Yes. Um, it's, I buy it from the local shop. It's coarse maize meal polenta. Um, so yeah. Take, uh, just clear it a little bit. Oh, getting polenta everywhere. I haven't really thought this through. My bin is miles away. It's up there. Pizza wheel. Cut through that. Uh, I've not tried that, but yes, I guess it's uh, it's another one of those. Well, I think you could agree that's got a lovely base on it. Lovely crisp dough, nice and fluffy inside. I think that's going to be a cracking pizza. Um, I'm not going to eat it because I've got so much else to do. So what I will do is take a plate. We're going to have some leftovers in a minute. Ooh, that worked. Lucky. So when you put the when do you put the convector on? Do you wait until it's hot or put it in? Or yeah. So I'm going to show you on that egg in a second. Um, so uh, question was when do you put the convector in? I get the egg always to 180 degrees. Then I set the temperature I want, and at that point. I put the convector in, but not until I've warmed up the egg a bit. So that egg is warming up now. It's just about 150 degrees, uh, but we'll go and have a look at our wings. So let me just put this in the bin. Right. So this is the XL. Um, I use it today because we had so many wings. Um, all of these have come off chickens that we <coughs> things flying everywhere. Um, you'll have seen like, a couple of weeks ago we butchered a chicken. I might as well put that on instead of flying around. Um, we butchered a chicken. I've probably already got pizza on me, but um, I always buy my chickens whole and portion them, so the wings always come off, uh, and we always just then backpack them, pop them in the freezer, and then when we want wings, we've always got wings. Um, so all of these have come off whole chickens that we bought so um, you can see there's quite a few in there so we've got two layers um, all I've done to these this egg is set 180 degrees I have the convector in the bottom so I've turned it into an indirect heat um, I'll push this back and clip it um, so we can get in and all I've done with these wings is um, uh, put a tiny bit of salt on them. The salt just enables them to crisp up a bit, draws out some of the flat. Um, so yeah, these are sitting nicely. Just turn them over. Um, they're all cooked up now. They've been on about 45 minutes. So I'm going to give them a bit more. Uh, so if we probe them, you should see, yeah, they're way above 74. A little bit more will just make them more crispy. Um, there are people out there who say put baking powder on them or bake uh, or you know by carb or whatever um, I find they're just perfect just cook them a little bit of salt uh, 180 indirect for about 45 50 minutes and they're absolutely fine okay so while those finish cooking um, you will see this egg is already over 220 nearly 250 degrees and rising fast so I'm going to open it up. It's warming up. It's not hot yet, but it's warming up. Um, if you look in, what you'll see is just the middle's going still, but there's a lot of heat. If you want it to get hotter, what you can do is just pull the charcoal out of the middle and that'll increase the airflow through the middle um, and it will help it get hotter faster. Um, so while it's sparking a bit, I'm going to put my convector stainless steel grid baking stone into this egg um, so we're just going to drop it in and get those warmed up just to show you that by, hopefully by the end of this class all of that will be over 350 degrees and this is my oldest egg this is seven years old uh, all original parts um, yeah so 
if you can't get your egg hot uh, within the time frame, it's because it's dirty or you haven't got good charcoal in there. Right, so Andy, we are going to go over there. I'm going to grab a few things. just take some of these away so the question was is the expert program still running at the moment no uh, so that was where we got um, big green egg got um, and I was one of them uh, got people who uh, knew how to cook to go and help and demo and so on um, so to my knowledge and I do do some work with big green egg um, I don't think that's running at the moment. Um, they're concentrating on uh, a lot of other things. Okay, so a couple of questions. Can you use I'm just going to drop some garlic. So, another yeah. baking stone other than Big Green Egg because they're out of stock? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, the Big Green Egg baking stone is out of stock at the moment. Uh, you can use, there are two half moon ceramics that they are in stock. You can use those. Um, it's not my favourite because they're a little bit wider. Um, um, what I would advise against is um, the baking stones that you get in, you know, that are cheap, that you get in uh, uh, some shops. Um, they're a lot thinner. So that's the end, I'm just taking off. And they're a lot thinner and they tend to crack. Um, the heat in the egg is just so severe, uh, which is a good thing, that they tend to crack. So um, I need a bit of salt. Looks like it's going to absolutely pee it down on, on us in a moment. We hadn't, hadn't um, thought about that, but no. So um, I just wait till they come back in. Most things are due back in, I believe, in June. So all I'm doing here is just crushing garlic. Um, you could put it through a garlic press. I haven't got one, so I just do it with a bit of sea salt. Um, anyway, so. So another quick question. Someone's having a trouble getting their mini max up to high temperature. Exactly. Give it a clean, chuck out all the little bits of charcoal that are blocking all your air holes. Take all the insides out, just give it a good clean. Um, always the same. So in here, we have, um, I've just crumbled in some blue cheese. We're going to make a blue cheese dressing. Uh, I'm going to put a bit of that garlic. I don't think I need it all. Um, I'm going to put some sad cream. So about half the volume of um, the cheese. Okay. I'm going to put in some uh, mayonnaise, about a quarter of the volume of the cheese. As ever, I'm measuring everything out, as I always do. Um, I'm just going to grab my uh, press. Uh, I'm going to put in juice of half a lemon. You could use vinegar. Um, and you could also put into here some black pepper if you wanted. Um, ideally, I'm going to put this down here and the girls will shoot me, but ideally make this the day before and let it all get come together. But we now have, and they hate this, the pair of them, um, they hate blue cheese dressing. But for me, if you're going to do buffalo chicken wings, then you've got to do this. Um, and we're going to do three types of chicken wing now. So, so let's have a bowl of blue cheese. Right. Just going to move this out of the way and flip my chopping board over. This is one of the big green egg chopping boards, and it's got a lovely bowl on the back. And so that can go in the middle, and that will be ready now for when I do my wings. So let's go and get some of those wings. Um, I'm going to do three three types. So let me get this out of the way. So Andy, if you come over. <laughs> Rachel's worried about your feet uh, with that knife, right? Uh, because you've only got your flip flops. Yeah. On. Do you want to come over, Andy? Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Any other questions or shout outs or uh, no. any hangovers this week? Oh yeah. We had hundreds of hangovers last week. Right, it's gonna rain on us. Who would have thought? Right, so we'll get roughly a third of these. Um, so they're all cooked nicely. They're all nice and crisp on the outside. So I'm gonna do some suitable for kids first. Um, my niece and nephew, Sol and Lexi, love these. Oh, it's gonna rain as well. <laughs> this could be amusing. 
So, really simple with these ones. Bit of salt, not too much, because they've already had some on there. And some lime. Yeah, flip-flops, I've left my knife. But flip-flops and uh, the rain is great. So, a bit of lime. So if you've got kids, these are the way to go. So just lime and salt. Um, I'm gonna grab a spoon, I'll grab this one. Just give them a mix. And we'll get those into this bowl. That's our first lot of wings. Easy, everyone can do those. Oh, uh, these are for you, Rob. Oh no, you like the spicy one. I'm talking to Rob Scott. Apparently he's on watching. So um, that's the first ones. Uh, second, we are going to do our traditional, um, and I'll reuse the bowl. So if you come over, Andy. Oh, Rachel's a little bit hungover. Oh, Rachel. What would Tom say? Rachel. Rachel is a bit hungover this morning. Rachel is my sister-in-law. So. We've got a bit of a family pattern here last week. It was the other sister-in-law uh, hung over last week. Um, so that's one, another set. Um, so more chicken wings going on. Let me just pull this back. And I'm gonna cheat with these. You come over, Randy, I'll grab something. We've all seen it. They have red, uh, Frank's red hot sauce and they do a wings version. If you're gonna use this one, just put a bit of butter in and mix it with them, or you can just use the wings version. Pour it on. Give it a good mix. And that is your traditional buffalo style hot wing that you, if you were in the States, that's exactly what they're serving to you in those bars. somebody struggling with temperature control especially at 110 to 120 you need tiny little gaps so uh, let's show you on that egg because we're not we're not using it at the moment um, so if I wanted 110 to 120 on here I would shut it so that the top is just that tiny little gap can you see that maybe even less there and down on the draft door it would be shut to something like that Okay, and as small as that, oh, we're going to get absolutely lashed on. Um, this will be interesting. Um, anyway, so I'll open it back up, but yeah, just set it like that. Let the temperature drop. If you're going beyond below, then open it a little bit, but just let it stabilise. Just let it, let it, um, just the temperature settle. Right, last trip. Andy's loving this. Hang on a sec. No, I know. No, <laughs> Let go. Uh, look, look, look I'm... how look how excited she is about it. Helen is there with my keyboard, which is probably going to get wrecked, and my iPad, which isn't waterproof. But anyway, I need flip yeah. waders. <laughs> anyway, right. So last sauce. Let's take it over to, over here. In fact, no, I'll do it here, Andy. Sorry, oh. I'm just keeping on your toes. Go on, Helena. Yeah, there is on. Uh, yeah, if you look on my website, um, on the technique section, there is a set of pictures of the daisy wheel and the regulator and the draft door for every temperature. Um, it's under the menu on the right that says um, technique or something like that. So yeah, it's on there. We'll, we'll link it to the page. Right. Everybody loves these. Um, so we are, these sauces by the way, we're going to do some Korean chicken wings. These sauces are available on Amazon or if you've got a decent, half decent um, Asian shop, you can just pick them up. So I pick these up from the Asian shop in the week. Uh, so about a tablespoon and a half of um, the chili paste. It's a fermented chili paste. Um, I'll use a different spoon. About the same amount of this fermented soya bean paste. Now I'm putting these into a pan. Um, 
Okay, we'll get them in there. Uh, I'll put that somewhere that, oh, sorry, I'll put that there. Um, about a tablespoon and a half of runny honey. Bit of sweetness. A bit more sweetness and a bit of rich, richness. This is um, um, soft brown sugar, so that goes in. So we're gonna put all this in a pan. We need some soy sauce, about a tablespoon. Uh, we need some sesame so uh, oil, a teaspoon. Um, the whole recipe is tablespoons except this. If you put a tablespoon of this in, you'll know about it. So uh, a teaspoon of roughly of sesame oil. Uh, we're going to do the juice for lime. So I'm just going to grab my knife and my juicer. So, juice of a lime, juice. half a lime I'll put in, well, maybe a bit more, that was not particularly juicy that one, that's better, uh, get those all in there, give them a good mix up, now um, I've mentioned these pans before, this is a Tefal Ingenio pan, um, the beauty of these is the handles unclip, um, so I'm just going to warm this sauce through, so I'm going to put it in this nice hot egg. Take the handle off, job done. So we're just going to warm that up. And the other things I've got for my Korean wings are some sesame seeds and some spring onions. So while that just warms through, we will go and grab those. Is it a genius thing out of stock? Uh, question was, is the Egg Genius out of stock, still out of stock? Um, yes, the Egg Genius um, is a controller for your egg. Um, it is still out of stock. Um, as soon as it's back in stock, those of you who have asked me to quote for it, I will quote for it. Um, I've got all your names on the list. Um, so uh, we will get that quoted for. Um, but yeah, the Egg Genius, brilliant bit of kit, um, allows you to control the temperature of your egg. Um, remotely so uh, basically it puts a fan on the door at the bottom uh, it has a little con uh, uh, temperature gauge that clips onto your grid uh, measures the temperature of your egg and your food this one's pushed into the food and so you can then use an app to set what temperature you want your egg to be at uh, and it works brilliantly and it will hold it within you know two or three degrees so it makes it really easy it's almost cheating it turns your egg into an oven um, so. Perfect. So Claire Tubby, Claire, hi, um, my neighbour, she's just back here. Um, I've never met her yet. They only moved in a while back, um, but she follows every week. Um, so we're going to do a food delivery, we put some in a box and drop them off. So there you go, Claire. Um, we've also got our um, Helena's mum and dad coming to collect these. So as soon as I, the video stops, they're jumping in the car to come and collect them from our drive. So um, yeah, don't think that we're going to eat all of these. We'll, we could give it a good go. Uh, but it's not going to happen. So, right, we've got those off. Let's go and have a look at this sauce. Uh, so, let's get a spoon in here. Perfect. So, it's starting to heat up. It's starting to heat up nicely. We've got a good bit of heat. So, you can see in there. Now, these are going to be nice and spicy. So, we've done the ones for the kids. We've done the ones traditional which are quite hot and these are going to be super spicy so I think that's good enough if we had a bit more time we might do it a little longer but I'm going to go for that so we'll take this off we'll... oh another hungover so Claire my neighbour is hungover brilliant she could probably hear me I'm so loud um, right get in there Andy have a look at those that is my favorite chicken wing. So all we're gonna to do to these, we're gonna get some sesame seeds, sprinkle those on. Hopefully she hasn't got a nut allergy. <laughs> Although it's sesame seed and nut, I should know this. Um, now we're gonna get some of those spring onions, get them in there. Just give it a little toss through. all of those spring onions and we'll serve these up mm. 
Now that is what I call a set of wings. And Andy, before we're, uh, we're a bit ahead of schedule, but if you come over here, have a look at this egg. We're up over 300 degrees C already. Uh, so in less than 40 minutes with the baking stone, with the convector in there, we could be cooking pizza on there. Uh, and that is a seven year old egg and it will get that hot that quick. So if you're worried about your egg. Um... Can we refer to those the Korean sauces on camera? Oh yes. They're both on my recipe on my website and they're linked on, uh, uh, on um, Amazon. But this one is, yeah, they're all in Korean. So if you can read it, you're doing well. Um, this is their hot chili paste, uh, it's fermented, and this is their fermented um, soya bean paste. Um, when you go into any Asian store, you will see them, the soya bean paste is always in the brown tub and the chili paste is always in the red tub. Um, whatever brand it is, they seem to put them in the right, right colored tub, so you can't go wrong. Um, some of these are different heats though. Um, I have no idea what this is. If you can read that and tell me whether this is hot chili sauce or just normal chili sauce, um, you're doing better than I am. Um, but both of those came from the, the um, Korean shop um, on our uh, on Mill Road in Cambridge. Right. Uh, Any can questions? Show the pizza slider thing. The pizza slider thing. I, I assume you mean it's called a super peel. I'll link to it. Um, the only place you can get it in the UK is Bakery Bits. Um, basically, it's a little cloth that goes round. Um, these little clips come off, so you can take it off and wash it, but it still stays black. Um, but yeah, it just goes through a little slot here and as you push, you don't move the cloth, you hold it with one hand and you move the peel like that. And that's the key to it. Um, what you want to do when you first do it is do something like that and it always goes wrong. It's quite funny watching people use it for the first time, but what right, you need you to do. Okay, I will link it if you can get them on Amazon now. It might not be a super, it might be a, a knockoff, but this was the original. I imported it from Canada, 15, no, it was in the old house. It's got to be 20, almost 25 years ago. Brilliant bit of kit. Um, anyway, so we're done. So let's see if there's any questions. I haven't eaten anything, so I've got to try the buffalo wings in the blue cheese because that is how I remember wings. Do you know when the cast iron skillet for the Mini Max oh. is likely to be back in stock? Cast iron skillet for the Mini Max. Um, Mark's one. Um, if you look on my website, there are some available. I have a stock of them here, um, but I have to charge you postage on them, unfortunately. That's Mark from Smoke, I think. Mark from? Mark's oh, awesome. Mark, um, I, I will get back to you. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. I'm going to send it to you. Um, Yes, as a thank you. So um, just send me your address, Mark. Um, and he knows that Mark Thomason at, at Smoke Fine Foods up in Newcastle does some of my classes. So I'm going to send that to you. Um, anyway, this is delicious. Uh, any alternatives to big green egg charcoal as it's quite expensive? Mm. Sorry, I'm going to put those down. Always do this, get absolutely filthy. Andy, this week, if I am covered in sauce, you can say, Nick, yeah, you're covered I know. in sauce. I just, <clears throat> I feel I should, should say apologies for the camera shaking. I'm cold and wet. That's, <laughs> that's the reason for the camera shake today. Um, so is there any alternative to big green egg charcoal? Um, there are all sorts out there. Um, however, they tend to be equivalent sort of prices. Um, I always think of my charcoal as an ingredient and, um, it's I you know it's worth buying the good stuff. Um, you can use stuff like Big K or Liverpool wood pellets or um, CPL. It's a bl it's like a, a blue coloured bag. Um, I've not had good results with it personally. I don't use it. I use Big Green. It. Um, but that's just the way it is for me. Any other questions? Um, some of the soybean is out of stock. Do we know if there's an alternative? Yeah, if you look on Amazon, I will link to another one. Um, I should have said that. Um, um, when so, for some reason I linked to the soybean on Amazon, it sells out quickly because people like making the, the sauce, but the, the vendors get onto it and they actually bump the price up. 
So I keep switching it to a different brand to keep the price down. So I will go and find another one after this and update the recipe so it points to something else that is in stock that you can get hold of. Um, it's normally about um, five quid for a big tub. They're little tubs. Uh, they're about 350, something like that, I think. Yeah. Questions, Helena? No, I think that- Who have we had on that? that... Uh, so we've had Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Paul White. Paul White down in Devon again. That's Steve a, Conway. Steve in Huntingdon, lovely. Or God Mike Manchester. Burns. Shouldn't say Huntingdon. Mike Burns, yeah, we gave him a. Yeah. Susan Stoneman. Sue Stoneham, Susan Stoneham. Yeah, um, happy birthday, Susan. It was, oh no, it's on Thursday. I've checked that out. Next Thursday. Um, happy birthday. Um, I only know that because it's the same day as mine. Lucy, um, Lucy's on. Lucy McKay, hello, Lucy. Anyway, so I think. That is just under 45 minutes, 40 minutes, exactly what we uh, aim for. So hopefully you've enjoyed those. We'll get some of these boxed up and over and in the box um, across the road. We'll send some more out. And uh, next, week is surf and turf. next week is surf and turf. Because as I've just said, it's my birthday during the week. It's my 50th. So we are going big next week. Lobster and steak. Um, so not really Saturday night takeaway. Hopefully the weather will be better. Um, but I will get all of these recipes up, the ones that aren't already, uh, oh. and you can have a go. So, what do you say? Just like, hey, say hi to Neve. Hi to Neve, hi Neve. <laughs> also in God, Manchester, so perfect. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, let us know. So, this week, I think we agree, next week we've agreed we're doing surf and turf. Well, I said that because it's my birthday. The week after, we all agreed we were going to do tapas. So start thinking about what you want the week after that. Um, I get great feedback. I love seeing all the pictures of you cooking all of these things. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up because I can see Andy shaking. <laughs> She's freezing. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. See you next week. Cheers.